This is James Javier Barbour, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this oil painting on Legion Stonehenge oil paper. First thing I'm going to do is start knocking in the basic outline of, of my, uh, my initial construction, my drawing for the portrait. I decided to place it a little further over to the left side of the paper. Now I'm knocking in very quickly the, uh, you know, the light mass, the shadow mass from one another, and I'm just going to uh, fill in certain areas really quickly first. I'm going for a uh, hyper exaggerated saturation level for this particular portrait in the light mass. I really wanted to go with something more like yellow ochre, mixed with a little bit of cad yellow, a little bit of red, uh, and a tiny bit of Naples uh, for that. For the darks and the shadows, I'm using primarily raw umber or burnt umber, depending on the situation. Uh, little touches of ultramarine blue. Uh, here you can see me uh, quickly getting in some of the initial flesh tones uh, in the darker side of the face that's going to be on the left side. You're going to see uh, some warm reds, vermilions there. And now uh, at this point I'm starting to uh, expand my value range a little bit in there and, and add a few little cooler touches with some Naples yellow into the face on the left side. Uh, I'm going to also strengthen up the light mass on the sh on the right side of the face, uh, bringing out the cheekbones as I do, and uh, filling in the lips. And one of the things I'm trying to do here is just try to establish things very uh, quickly in terms of getting the basic features of the face, uh, you know, the construction, the measurements uh, that I I feel. I really want to see initially. Uh, I'm always looking for the frontal midline, uh, the eye line, then the brow, the bottom of the nose, halfway between the bottom of the chin and the brow, and then the mouth line uh, where the lips part roughly between the bottom of the chin and the bottom of the nose. Uh, I knocked in the ears and I'm just thinking about big shadow masses um, that, that wrap underneath the bottom of the jaw into the hair uh, with the darkness of the pigmentation of the hair color. And you can see me really building out the separate planes of the face, the side plane, the front plane from one another with certain lights and shadows. Um, really trying to distinguish certain features like the eyes by deepening the shadows and the orbits to make them feel like they're really sinking in uh, areas of the mouth as well with the shadows underneath the mouth, shadows underneath the nose. And uh, you can see me really building up a sense of roundness uh, in terms of those big major planes. But again, there's still a lot of flatness in certain areas of the face. And I'm just kind of continuing to work uh, those areas in terms of those uh, subtle, smaller planes in between that. Now I'm getting into the area of the, of the chest. Uh, one of the things I try to do here is just to examine in the front area of the, of the, of the neck and chest area that... I have here uh, some of these major angles that are happening in the front of the neck. Um, I see a lot of triangular shapes there with the V-shaped formation towards the pit of the neck of the sternocleidomastoid um, and also with some of the angles to the right and left of the sternocleidomastoids on both sides of the neck. I'm also uh, continually uh, coming back to the features starting to add uh, certain tints with some Naples yellow and a little tiny bit of titanium white. I'm also adding uh, some greens to the face now, cooling down certain areas in the shadows uh, and starting to incorporate a little bit of oriental blue as well. I really want to play up that contrast between the warmth and the cool of the face. Uh, in the shadows, we should have it kind of feeling cooler there. It's going to help it feel like it's um, both descriptive in terms of what you see in there, but at the same time uh, receding into the shadows. And then in the areas that are coming towards us uh, and into the light, the areas like that that are basking in the light, I'm trying to keep it warm there. Um, most of the colors in there are, are little touches of cad red, um, flesh pink mixed with Naples yellow, yellow ochre, a uh, little touch of titanium white. I'm, I'm basically keeping my palette pretty restricted overall. Um, I'm not really expanding into too many uh, crazy colors. I, I think for me, this portrait just had to be um, fairly simple. 
uh, one of the things that I decided to go with with this portrait is to uh, work smaller, more intimate. I wanted this to be a smaller piece. It only measures about eight by eight inches, and uh, it's done on one of my favorite surfaces, Stonehenge Oil Paper by Legion. And uh, it's a really remarkable surface because you don't really have to coat it with anything like gesso or any kind of sizing at all. It, it's just ready to cut and use straight away. You can literally go right onto it with the oil paint. Uh, it was designed for oil paint. Um, and you can uh, paint directly on it without any fear that it will soak through the surface in any way. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a very versatile surface. And you can also use other kinds of uh, wet media on it as well, like ink, acrylic, watercolor. But again, this particular surface was primarily designed for oil painters in mind. So uh, as far as that's concerned, I really get a lot of joy out of working on this paper because I can mount it on a panel uh, to provide a more solid uh, foundation for it to sit on. Um, and then I can just paint straight on it. Um, here you can see me getting into the um, into the uh, background, and I'm just making up a background in general. I, I, you know, initially I didn't really know uh, exactly what I was going to paint back there, except I, I knew I wanted to be some kind of mysterious landscape setting, primarily set in the darkness uh, in the evening hours, and I wanted it to feel enigmatic, uh, very quiet, almost solitary. Um, I wanted her to feel like a bit scared, a little bit isolated, yet in some strange way comfortable in her surroundings, um, a little bit on edge. And, and I wanted to build up this sort of psychological, emotional uh, portrait here, not just any uh, particular, just regular portrait. Um, I, I'm not really concerned, to be very honest, about like whether or not somebody is waiting uh, to buy it or whether or not somebody is um, going to applaud at the end. I'm primarily concerned on making a, with making a great painting. I don't want to feel like when I sign my name to this that I'm not proud of it. I, I want it to be something that I'm in love with first. And if I'm in love with it as an artist, I'm probably going to do a better job. I'm going to put a lot more of my time. I'm going to invest a lot more of my uh, passion and technical skill into it and I'm really going to try to develop this into the best painting I can possibly develop even if it's a small little study. Um, this particular painting isn't as large as a lot of my other work but I still want it to feel larger uh, narratively and, and as a painting than what it actually is uh, in terms of its actual scale and, and part of the way I do that is by you know treating it important right from the very beginning. I, I really carefully plan it in terms of the composition, the drawing. Uh, I plan out each of my steps ahead of time. And sometimes I also leave a little room for, uh, you know, changes, revisions that happen to come along spontaneously along the way because little things are going to happen. Uh, you're not always going to be able to predict every single uh, thing that's going to happen along the way in terms of like mistakes or uh, problems that you you just can't foresee some of that. Uh, some things that looked great on paper in your sketchbook in a small scale, once you develop them larger on the actual canvas or, or a larger surface, it starts to fall apart. Um, it starts to not look as great as you initially thought it would. Uh, sometimes the colors don't initially work out as you thought they would. Um, that's why I think it's really important to do some poster studies, some color studies, value studies ahead of time, little tiny things like that. They don't have to be too realistic, just abstract little tiny things that give you a sense of where you're going with the harmonies of the color. Um, and you really want to try to uh, push yourself to, to be patient in the beginning, to try to fully think it out before you actually even put one brushstroke or one line on the page or canvas. Um, again, every little thing you do in the beginning is just going to end up with a better result. So take your time and uh, just be excited about your concept, number one, you know, because if you're coming from a place of excitement, you're going to do a better job. Here you can see me strengthening certain divisions between the front of the face and the side of the face by strengthening a little bit of reflected light, hitting the cheekbone in that three-quarter section, uh, merging into the temple on the left, uh, and connecting down to the orbicularis oris of the mouth and then 
dancing uh, a little bit underneath that in the pillars of the mouth, front of the chin, and changing up into a warmer tone of value um, within the front of the chin, which then moves into the right side of the face. Um, everything has to flow. Uh, everything has to harmonize well with one another. I tried my very best to incorporate some of the background colors into the face as well. Uh, you can see me working some of those blues, greens into the face, into the neck, into the shoulders, um, and into the hair. Uh, you can see me incorporating some of the colors of the face into the background as well. Um, I want this to feel like connected in terms of the portrait, in terms of the environment around her. I really want you to feel like you can breathe that air. That, that she's in that environment. Even though I'm making up that environment, I still want her to feel like she's part of it. So part of the way I do that as well is by handling my edges carefully and trying to soften where I need to soften um, and how to uh, also like create a sense of distance in that perspective as well uh, by effectively incorporating some of the colors of the sky into the colors uh, fading into the far distance uh, with some of that landscape back there and also i'm handling the details a little crisper a little sharper um, the colors a little more saturated and, and clearer towards the foreground than i do in the middle ground or the background where i want it to sort of fade back there matting uh, a little path that she's maybe on walking along the way in this enigmatic landscape uh, and at first, I wasn't very sure where I was going to go with that either. Um, I had a plan initially to make it just a regular gravel, loose dirt kind of soil path. Uh, but then I started experimenting with the idea of putting in some rocks. And I started putting a few rocks in at this point here in the foreground of the path. And uh, leading back into it, I thought, well, why not? I'm having a lot of fun painting those rocks. So let's just go ahead and continue that. So overall, uh, I've been trying my very best here to build up a, a unity for this entire picture. I really want it to feel as if it has something to say. So at this point, there's not much left to do. Uh, I'm just tightening up the little tiny details of the face that are still left uh, with each of the features, adding um, you know little revisions to the background, adjusting the colors, adding a body of water, uh, tightening up the areas of the chest and neck and I'm basically feeling pretty good about it at this point so I hope you enjoyed this and you learn a lot in the process and uh, I look forward to talking to you next time